We're going to cover possibly one of the most advanced, if not the most advanced, ear piercings you can get. The transverse lobe piercing. Coming up next on Consultations by a Piercer, episode number 18. So you might want to stick around. For those who are new to the Body Piercing and Tattooing channel, welcome to the channel. Hope you're enjoying the videos, but if it's your first one, you might not know who I am. My name is Davo. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located right here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. The piercing we're talking about today is a transverse lobe, also known as a translobe piercing. It is a piercing. Instead of doing it the way that most of us have had it done, where it's straight through the lobe, like here's the lobe, it goes like that. This one goes lengthwise across the lobe. It is an extremely difficult piercing to do. It usually has to be done slowly. And one of the things, one of the things that makes it kind of rare is it is so advanced it's not often asked for, and, well, it kind of limits what you can do afterwards, and we'll get into a lot of this stuff here coming up. Uh, the thing I need to preference this with the most is because it is so rare, many piercers have, ne no matter how long they've been doing this, has never done one. Uh, it kind of came into fashion there for a minute in the late 90s, and then the door kind of shut, but like all piercings, Somebody out there probably wants this one, so here's a consultation. Average healing time on this is a longer healing time. I would say six months to a year, and the reason why is how long the piercing is and where it's located. Uh, it, it's going to take a lot longer than a normal, traditional lobe piercing well. During that time, you want to clean it twice daily with a sterile saline solution. I like Neil Med's piercing aftercare. Um, because it comes out in a fine mist, so it's a little less complicated. However, um, their wound wash version or other versions of sterile saline solution will work. The things you want to look for is that it's in a pressurized can, um, and it says on the front of it, sterile, <laughs> sterile saline solution. When you flip it over in the back, you look at the ingredients, and all it says is sodium chloride, a.k.a. salt, in purified or possibly distilled water. Nothing else. No additives, no uh, egg whites, no weird chemical names, no emu oil, no tea tree oil, no lavender, no frankenmints. <laughs> Just saline. That's it. What we're going to use this for is to remove the, the hardened uh, discharge. Uh, during the healing process, your body will produce a lymph discharge, a hardening crust on the jewelry. It's basically plasma and waste. That needs to be removed on a regular basis to avoid it sliding or agitating the piercing by sliding into it. Because jewelry tends to move no matter how well you try to keep things away from it. So to do that with uh, the mist style, you just mist the area and leave it be. If you're going to do that with a uh, one that comes out kind of like a squirt gun... I would suggest doing a cold compress. Just take a clean, sterile piece, brand new piece of gauze sponge or a clean paper towel will work. Saturate it, lay it against the area for about five minutes, and then just wipe the area clean. The other thing is when you're in the shower, at the end of your shower, pull your hair and everything out of the way and just let the water flow over the area for about 30 seconds. It feels good, and it also helps to kind of melt away that discharge even more. If you get into a situation where there seems like there's a lot of discharge on there and it just won't come off, see your piercer. Have them clean it for you. Uh, don't start digging around there and searching through the bathroom closet and drawers for things to dig around and poke at it and take it off. Uh, all those things can lead to contaminating the piercing or agitating the piercing and leading to bigger issues. The other thing is, is if you're getting a lot of discharge, especially late in the healing process, there might be something else going on, and it's a good idea to just have your piercer, 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 your piercer, have your piercer take a look just to be on the safe side. Now it's time to talk about the don'ts. Cross-contamination prevention. Wash your hands before you handle it. Don't handle it with dirty hands. Uh, no oral contact or exchange of bodily fluids on or around the piercing until it heals. 
Keep your environment clean. Clothing, bedding, towels, anything that may come in contact with it needs to be cleaned on a regular basis. Do not submerge piercing your body's water you cannot control the quality of, which is pretty much everything but your own clean bathtub. I don't care how well treated it is. I don't care if you can see your feet from 20 feet in. It's full of microorganisms that will cause an infection. And now you have an open wound on your body. Do the math. Keep pets away from it. Don't let them sleep in the bed with you, especially the smaller ones that like to sleep over your face and are attracted to shiny objects. Um, avoid contact with unclean objects. Things that are culprits with this are like telephones, over-the-ear headphones, hats like stocking caps. Uh, pretty much anything that comes in contact with the area needs to be disinfected or contact needs to be avoided completely. Also, make sure that your hair is dry before it comes in contact with the area. Uh, usually, I would suggest after you get out of the shower, put it in a fun bun or wrap it up in a towel and pretend you're a genie or something. Now let's talk about the other do not. Trauma, pressure, and abuse. Be kind to your piercings. Do not abuse them. They're, they're piercings too. Uh, obsessive contact, trauma, playing with the piercing, all of these things are going to cause issues, including sleeping on the piercing. You want to sleep on your other side, your back, or figure out a way to elevate this piercing completely off the bed. You don't really realize, I don't care how good it feels to lay on it, it doesn't hurt, blah, blah, blah. If you lay on it, that obsessive pressure and movement can jostle the jewelry around and cause agitation, which is going to lead to issues, including bumps. Avoid wearing anything that's going to put a lot of pressure on the lobe. For example, headphones or helmets or uh, ear protection. If it has contact with the piercing and it's pressing on it all the time, it's going to cause issues. And I mentioned this earlier, but <laughs> do not spin, rotate, move the jewelry. There is absolutely no benefit to doing this. In fact, it will create problems. Leave it alone. It is in the forbidden zone until it is healed. Now let's talk about jewelry. Jewelry with this one, it really depends on the shape of your ear. Um, you, If it's more, the placement's going to be more of a straight line or there's a lot of room or your, your lobe is well detached, then they may do it with a straight barbell. Um, if it's more, it's going to have to be lower, but you want to get it more inside. If it's a little attached in the front, not so much on the back, and it's shaped correctly, then it's probably going to be done with a curved barbell. This style of jewelry is either going to be threaded or threadless. Uh, with threadless, you know, you really need to check the tightness occasionally to make sure that that friction is being held. Uh, with the threaded, check those balls, make sure they're tight on a regular basis. Balls, ends, whatever is in there. The other thing is, is usually we will pierce with something longer than needed. And this is to allow space for inflammation, a.k.a. swelling. You want to downsize in roughly four to six weeks. See your piercer to have this done. They have the proper tools to do this. Uh, basically, in essence, they're going to limit the amount of trauma the piercing has during the insertion of the new jewelry and removing the other one. Um, which could lead to swelling coming back or agitation, and then you suddenly have a situation where, yay, you're at your smaller barbell, it looks so nice, and then it starts swelling. Now let's talk a little bit about pain. This piercing is more painful than traditional lobe piercings. Uh, actually, I would say quite a bit more, mainly because the piercing has to be done at a slightly lower rate and because we're going through a lot more tissue. Now, is it so bad that you're probably not going to be able to live through this? No. Uh, most proficient piercers will get this done as quickly as they possibly can. Jewelry in uh, insertion is pretty smooth. There's no bending or flexing of the area. And that's just getting the, the end on. Very quick once we get past that initial piercing. But we need to make sure that that piercing is directly in the center of that area on one side or other, depending on how thick the cartilage is in your lobe. Now, this is going to be tender to touch uh, anywhere from, well, up to about a few weeks. We create quite a bit of trauma when we do this piercing. Uh, the swelling is probably going to last. Normal reaction, you see redness, discolorization, heat, tenderness to touch, inflammation, and swelling. That is all completely normal and part of the healing process. Lastly, let's talk about anatomy. Uh, this is one of the, the, on the long list of ear piercings uh, and various other piercings where there is such a vast 
amount of different types of anatomy out there walking around and one lobe will be different than the other lobe so anatomy plays a big important part in most cases if not all cases the lobe needs to be detached um, if it isn't, it probably can't be done. It needs to be pronounced enough to make that piercing high enough in the piercing that it's not going to reject down through the bottom. Um, and uh, it needs to be fat enough that the jewelry can actually be supported and there's room for it. And as I mentioned earlier, the jewelry type and style will be dictated by the shape of your anatomy. Lastly, let's talk about other things to consider that you may not consider normally. Uh, the first thing being is this can be in the way of any future lobe piercings that you want to get done. It can affect whether or not you can stretch your ears. Um, usually, I wouldn't suggest stretching a piercing that's above this piercing. It's going to cause problems. So it kind of blocks off a whole big chunk of your anatomy where you could use where you could decorate it a great deal more. That said, sometimes stacking these with smaller gauge jewelry can look really cool and it's easy to do either above or below, but you have to understand that that bar's there, it's going to be in the way. With this piercing, it's important that you have a consultation with your piercer before getting it done. Uh, they should cover the risk, they should cover their experience level on it, whether or not they even feel comfortable. They should evaluate your anatomy and do all those things that we're supposed to do before we get something done or Peer something. You know, all that ethical stuff where we educate and inform people. If you get into a situation where you walk into a studio and they're like, yeah, I have time to do it right now, I really wouldn't advise it. Uh, basically, they should kind of talk to you about some of the risks that are involved. They should also talk about a lot of what I've covered in this video. The other thing is, is because this is so, you just have to have the right anatomy for it, you should have a backup plan. If there's something, uh, some other ear project that you've been thinking about or another thing and you're like one of those people that's just going to be disappointed if they go in and they can't get it done, have a backup plan. Something else you can get pierced that day. So you, you still leave with, you know, happy, satisfied and with something fun and shiny. Now, the other things, if you're planning on going on vacation in that during that healing period, uh, you might want to delay piercing until that vacation is over. Uh, the problem with vacations or extended stay trips or business trips is that a lot of times you can't really control how clean the environment you're in is. Uh, you generally want to consider delaying until you can. The other thing is when we go on vacation, most people want to swim and you're not going to be able to swim with this piercing while it's healing. Next, if you're involved in any type of sporting activities, I would advise winning until you're completely done with this. The same thing goes for anything that has a dress code, whether it be job or voluntary, uh, you know, competing or some type of organized activity where there is a dress code. This piercing, once it's in there, you want to leave it in, even after it's well healed taking it out because the piercing is so long will risk closure. And unless you want to go through the whole process of, of getting pierced again and healing it out, you're not going to have that wonderful piercing anymore. Sorry. Sleeping and isolating is always the last thing I cover in most of these, and it's because it is so important. Uh, agitating piercings, adding pressure to it, trauma, et cetera, will prolong your healing period and possibly lead to other problems. The other thing is, is that um, with sleeping, I don't know if I covered this before, but you need, if you have to sleep on that side, you need to figure out a way to elevate it off the bed. The most common or easy way to do that is to buy one of the U-shaped pillows, the Nick pillows, you know, travel pillows, and then put a clean sock on it each and every night to make sure that it's clean. Well, that pretty much covers it. If you liked this or found it helpful, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, let me know that you liked it because we like it when you like it. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time we post something. If you have this piercing or are thinking about getting it done, leave a comment. I'd like to hear more about some people's experiences with this. It is an extremely rare piercing, um, though it can look really cool if it's done right. Till next time, here's hoping to leave piercings healed with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see if your body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Take care, and we'll see you in the next video. Possibly this one or this one or that one. Who knows?